Ethiopia's Tigray war survivors hope for a better future. From the Deutsche Welle by Jimena Barazas and Edgar Gutierrez in Tigray, June 17, 2024. Many survivors of Ethiopia's devastating Tigray war remain optimistic despite the scars left by the conflict. Warning, this story includes graphic accounts of sexual abuse, which some people may find disturbing. Please exercise caution before hearing on. A woman in her 70s sits on the pavement in Mekela, the capital of Ethiopia's Tigray region. She raises her hands with the last of her strength, begging for a few coins to buy some food. After the sun goes down and the lights of the tuk-tuks, rickshaws, illuminate the streets, the situation becomes more dire. Then the streets are lined, witty, abandoned children as young as three years, trying to those walking past handkerchiefs and chewing gum. Before the outbreak of war in Tigray, life was quite different for 42-year-old Kebedesh and her family. She ran a small hotel and was also involved in agricultural activities. Everything was going well, and the future looked bright. Then, on November 4, 2020, fighting between the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, FDRE, and the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, broke out. The war, which lasted two years, later saw Eritrean forces and Amhara militia joining hands to support the Ethiopian government forces, rape as a weapon of war. On December 11, 2020, a week after the outbreak of the conflict, as Kebedesh and her eight-year-old daughter were walking through Kafta, a rural area near the Eritrean border, five soldiers intercepted them, four from the neighboring country and one from the central government. They aggressively asked me, do you have a man at TPLF? I said no, Kebedesh recalled, but despite her refusal, the five men gang raped her. At the same time, they stabbed her daughter and poured boiling water on her stomach to silence her cries for help. After the soldiers left, Kebedesh gathered all the strength left in her and took her seriously wounded child to an Ethiopian military base to receive medical assistance. Kebedesh was among the estimated 120,000 people were subjected to sexual violence during the war in Tigray, according to the International Bar Association's Human Rights Institute for the Parliamentary Group on International Law, Justice and Accountability, APPG. Some of them have committed suicide because of the stigma. Yergalem Gebret Sadkan, head of the Violence Against Women Unit of the Tigray Genocide Commission of Inquiry, told DW. Life at the IDP camp. After this harrowing incident, Kebedesh and her daughter's lives became uncertain. For three months, they lived in an internally displaced person center in Adwa, having to cope with subhuman conditions. Adwa, located 160 kilometers, 99 miles north of Mekela, has a population of about 40,500 people. The Adwa Women's Affairs Office states that it has recorded 1,374 cases of rape. 86 of those cases were HIV positive, 72 of whom are children. Father Luan of the Don Bosco Mission, who is in charge of the religious center, heard about our story and chose us to be part of the program for women victims of sexual violence, Kebedesh told DW with a tone of relief in her voice. Since then, she has been sharing a compound of five rooms with 10 people who are also survivors of sexual violence. Dealing with trauma and stigma, when her little daughter, who just turned 11, lifts her t-shirt, it is impossible not to feel distressed. A visibly huge scar, which gives her an aesthetic complex, compounds the stomach problem she carries from the stabbing. The girl attends a private school that is paid for by the Don Bosco Center. According to her mother, she has no friends. Sometimes she is afraid when she walks to the student center, she is afraid that someone will attack her again. On top of all the experiences endured over the past four years, they now suffer from stigmatization. Now, both mother and daughter live in the shadow of suffering, afraid to speak out because of the stigma and harassment that society tends to impart on survivors of sexual violence. They fear being pushed into a corner and forced to leave the city, a family separated by war. Kebedesh's husband fled at the beginning of the war, leaving her in charge of four children. He was never heard from again until recently when news came that he had died during the conflict. 
Kebedesh now lives in a room financed by the Don Bosco Association with three of her four children, the eldest of whom is in Sudan fighting with the TDF, Tigray Defense Force. After the signing of the peace agreement in November 2022, I received a letter from him, so I know he is alive, Kebedesh said with a tone of relief. Hope for a better future. Despite deep physical and psychological wounds, Kebedesh and her children remain hopeful. I dream of setting up my own mini market and sending all my children to study, Kebedesh said. My daughter dreams of becoming a doctor to help herself and her people, she added, smiling. Tigray endured one of the bloodiest wars of the 21st century, with at least 600,000 people killed and more than one million internally displaced. Despite a peace agreement signed by TPLF and Ethiopia's federal government in November 2022, the situation in Tigray is still uncertain, despite meetings for dialogue between Abuwai's ruling Prosperity Party, PP, and the TPLF.